Good evening. Boy, does this group know how to take instructions. <clears throat> Welcome to the 2020 State of New Hanover County. We so appreciate you taking time to be with us this evening, and we're excited to share with you some of the things that have happened and some of the things that are to come. I'm Patricia Kusek, and I have the great pleasure of serving as Vice Chair of the Board of Commissioners alongside our Chair, Julia Olson Bozeman, with my fellow commissioners. 2019 was a year to remember, and tonight we get to reflect on our successes, the work we've accomplished together, and also look to the future and the important initiatives on our horizon. The state of the county address is typically given by the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners Chair. And while our chair will certainly come up here in a few minutes, we wanted to change the format up just a little bit, like we've done with a lot of things. The chair and I decided that we would share tonight's address to continue our focus on collaboration and working together, because none of us can do this alone. We all have to work together, focus on a common purpose, and do what is right for this county and the people who live and work here. Working together, commissioners, county staff, volunteers, citizens, and so many of you in this very room allowed us to have an incredibly successful 2019. Thank you all for your partnerships. And I want to say a special thank you to my husband, Walter, for continuing to support and encourage me as I serve all of you each day. Thank you, sweetie. Now's the fun part reflecting on all of our successes. In 2019, we completed several capital projects, including our new Ogden Fire Station, Pine Valley Library, and Health and Human Services Building. These are important accomplishments and facilities that will serve our community well for decades to come, and they'd been decades in the making. We revitalized our Women and Minority Business Enterprise Program to help ensure a higher rate of participation by minority and women-owned businesses in all aspects of the county's contracting and procurement services. We want to boost entrepreneurs and increase economic diversity in New Hanover County. In 2019, the Board of Commissioners also approved the most substantial change to the county's zoning ordinance since it was originally adopted in, get this, 1969. Thank you, Wayne and team. This amendment was the first phase in the county's development code update and provided the full spectrum of zoning options needed to support the county's comprehensive plan. Just last week, we also approved the second phase in the county's unified development ordinance, which brings all of the county's locally adopted development codes into one document, organized so the regulators work together and make it easier for property owners and others to find the information that they need. And who can forget those live oak trees? We took steps to approve a code amendment that requires the protection of large live oak trees in the unincorporated county because they are important for our environment and enhance our quality of life and the beauty of our county. It was the right thing to do. Our county parks and gardens certainly aid in the quality of life here and among numerous beautification and upgrade projects in our parks, we also installed a multi-use trail along Middle Sound Loop Road for safe biking and walking. And this trail will be expanded to connect with Ogden Park and along Market Street to the north. Plans are also underway for designing Battle Park, which will be a passive public park on Carolina Beach Road. And Airly Gardens completed their stormwater master plan improvements. And through these improvements, they are enhancing their watershed and furthering their mission as an outstanding historical garden that has both cultural and educational programs for citizens and visitors. Airly is a true gem for our region. Our libraries continue their incredible work of serving all people, furthering access to books and education opportunities, and even installing new self-service checkout equipment that improves the customer's experience. If you haven't visited the Cape Fear Museum lately, you might want to take a trip. They increased their educational opportunities and brought in new exhibits like Dinosaur Discovery and To the Moon, Snoopy Soars with NASA. 
and created interactive events that showed people the importance of the museum with a focus on science and our region's history. We also celebrated milestone anniversaries at our Arboretum. 20 years of the Ability Garden, 30 years of the Arboretum itself, and 40 years of the Extension Master Gardener Program. If you haven't visited the Arboretum lately, I encourage you to stop by and see the amazing programs and beautiful views they offer. It's free every day. Now, when it comes to waste, I can think of no more innovative operation than our county's landfill. Just this year, we completed the installation and startup of a landfill gas collection system, which helps dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions and provides us with the opportunity to convert landfill gas into renewable energy. We also successfully managed what was more than 3 million cubic yards of vegetative debris from Hurricane Florence. That was turned into about 40 acres of mulch at a depth of about 17 feet. The forward thinking and environmentally focused initiatives happening at our landfill are incredibly impressive. And right there on 421, we had a celebration of an important milestone for economic development with the expansion of sewer and water. This has been decades in the making. And in partnership with Cape Fear uh, Public Utility Authority, the county now has a corridor primed and ready for industries, smart businesses, and diverse higher wage jobs to come to our region. We have some incredibly dedicated public servants who keep us safe each day. Some of them are in this room right this very minute. Our 911 telecommunicators are the first responders behind the scenes, making sure that the right support and help is dispatched. They're the people that you hear on the other end of that phone. They should be commended for the powerful role they play every day in keeping us safe and secure. Our new Hanover County Fire and Rescue personnel also made a difference in 2019, responding to 6,652 calls for service, helping accident victims, fighting fires, protecting lives, and saving properties. They even served alongside our home delivered meal volunteers and tested smoke detectors in homes of our older adults. The new Hanover County Sheriff's Office provided superior public safety to our community. It's one of the pillars in New Hanover County. They received triple crown accreditation from the American Correctional Association, the National Commission of Correctional Health Care, and the Commission of Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. They're the first Sheriff's Office in North Carolina to achieve this triple crown award. Congratulations to the Sheriff and his staff on this important achievement. <laughs> but the Sheriff's Office wasn't done then. This past July, they also assumed operations and control of the crime lab and blood alcohol testing program through a commitment of county funding and an interlocal agreement with the city. And in only four short months, the Sheriff's Office Forensic Lab received accreditation in blood alcohol testing from the National Accreditation Board. That's a testament to the high quality hard work of our Sheriff's Office, and I believe we have positioned this to be an even better operation moving forward. Since 2016, the county has received 29 achievement awards from the National Association of Counties for our innovative programs and initiatives. In 2019, we earned seven national awards, and I want to share those programs with you this evening because I think it shows how, in so many different ways, your county is working for you and serving you. One of those programs was the Community Recovery Resource Center, which was created immediately after Hurricane Florence in a matter of hours to provide a place for residents to get the resources and supplies they needed in a compassionate atmosphere focused on the citizen. Our customer online access tool, which we fondly call COAST, is a land development software system that was implemented this year with the customer at the center, making it even easier to do business with the county. Numerous county departments were involved in this initiative and their collaboration has truly made this system a success. 
a drug positive infant protocol spearheaded by social services was recognized because it ensures our staff and community partners respond to the birth of a drug positive infant in a way that proactively helps the child and the family. So important for us. The county's landfill leachate reverse osmosis treatment system that effectively filters leachate and ensures the county remain a good environmental steward earned high praise and we're the only public landfill in the state to use this forward thinking system. Thank you guys. We also produced opioid public service announcements over the last few years, bringing awareness to the opioid epidemic and providing help and hope to those affected by the crisis and they become a resource for so many. And also recognized was the county funded pre-K expansion pilot program that now in its third year adds three new pre-K classrooms to help our at-risk children in our community be prepared as they enter kindergarten. The results are astounding. Kids are better prepared and families are lifted up. And the county also was awarded for our partnership and funding of the TIDES program to help treat opioid addicted pregnant and postpartum mothers. This program is making a difference in its protecting lives and providing hope. We also received two statewide awards for excellence and in innovation for the Community Re Recovery Resource Center that was created after Hurricane Florence and for the composting program at our landfill. This program has generated more than 150 cubic yards of finished compost, another highlight in our work as an environmental steward. And the county also received a top international award for reducing and maintaining lower rates of juvenile recidivism through the Community Service and Restitution Program. This program is improving and changing the lives of our youth. Thank you all to the departments and the staff who work day in and day out to implement these and many other programs. You clearly are making a difference for our community. And thank you to the hundreds of community citizens who have volunteered on county appointed boards and committees, our board of elections, our planning board, our soil and water conservation district, and there's many, many more, too many for me to name this evening. We appreciate your service to the community and your passion for what you do and for stepping up to the plate to do your part to help make New Hanover County a great place. Now I'd like for you to please join me in welcoming our chair, Julia Olson Bozeman to continue sharing this year's State of the County Address. Thanks, Julia. Give it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Good evening and welcome to all of you. Before I want to begin, I want to thank many people who are in the room. Today, first, I want to thank my wife, Angie, and our children, and my mom, Ann Bozeman. I also want to recognize and thank my fellow commissioners, Vice Chair Patricia Kuzak, Commissioner Jonathan Barfield, Commissioner Woody White, and Commissioner Rob Zappel. We all work hard on your behalf, and I believe that we are all here to make, because we want to serve our community and make New Hanover County the best place to live. So please join me in thanking them for their dedication. <laughs> we also have numerous elected officials and community leaders who have joined us tonight. I appreciate your partnership and your support of New Hanover County. Thank Representative Janet Bradbury's here, Representative Chance Lambeth, thank you, Representative Ted Davis Jr. Superior Court Judge Phyllis Gorham, Superior Court Judge Frank Jones, Superior Court Judge Kit Harrell, our District Court Judges, our Chief District Court Judge, Judge J. H. Corping II, James H. Faison III, Robin Wicks Robinson, and Lindsay McKee. The Clerk of the Superior Court, Jan Kennedy, is also here. I'd like to thank the Wilmington City Council, Mayor Bill Sappho, Mayor Pro Term, excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem Margaret Haynes, Charlie Ravenbark, and City Manager Sterling Cheatham. Carolina Beach Town Council, Mayor Pro Tem Jay Healy, Joe Dan Garza, and Lynn Barbie. 
and mayor of Curie Beach is Mayor Craig Wazinski. Also from the Board of Education, we have Stephanie Adams, Bill Ravenbark, Nelson Bowyer, and for New Hanover County Soil and Water Conservation Supervisor Evan Folds and Vice Chair Sue Hayes. Thank you again for being here and for all that you do. I appreciate the leadership of County Manager Chris Cudre, our County Attorney Wanda Copley, and our Clerk to the Board, Kim Crow. I also want to thank all of the incredibly dedicated, passionate people who work for New Hanover County. We have around 2,000 employees who every day serve our community in big and small ways. Your work is making a difference. It's bringing the county strategic plan to life in real and meaningful ways. It is public service at its finest, and I want to thank all of you who are here. As you just heard from Vice Chair Kuzak, 2019 was an incredibly successful year for our county. And I believe 2020 is another year of significant possibilities. It will be a year of action, of advancing key initiatives that will benefit our county and our community. So I want to reflect on a few more key actions that took place in 2019 and are continuing into 2020. We consolidated the governance of the public health and social services departments into one health and human services agency. This was aided by our Health and Human Services Building, which beginning next week will house both agencies, creating better and easier access for our customers. Since we consolidated, we have streamlined services, created more collaboration, and cut down on staff vacancies considerably. We are putting the people we serve at the center of everything we do, and that has been a true focus for all of the process developments throughout consolidation. A big thanks to our social services, health, IT, and strategy staff for working together to make this happen. 2020 will bring additional collaborations, a new energy, and a new level of services that will benefit our community and our customers. Because New Hanover County is, leader, is a leader in health nationally, we have been invited to pursue a Healthy Counties Challenge through the National Association of Counties in 2020. Our health and human service departments are ready to accept this challenge, working together in a systems level approach with New Hanover Regional Medical Center and local partners in order to advance health equity and prevent chronic diseases. I look forward to seeing how this initiative creates more collaboration and improves our community's health overall. In 2019, we also approved a new stormwater services program that will begin in July of this year. With this new program, our neighbors in the unincorporated areas of the county would be able to rely on the county to clean ditches and manage the runoff. It would ensure we move forward with more resilient stormwater management policies to help practices to help prevent major issues that led to the flooding that some of our re residents experienced during the recent hurricanes. We know this is an important issue and we are committed to moving forward in a positive way. Speaking of storms, in 2019, while we were still continuing intense recovery efforts from Hurricane Florence, we persevered through Hurricane Dorian. We took the lessons we learned from Florence and worked to ensure we were even better prepared, resilient, and ready to meet the needs of our community. Our staff continue to work with homeowners every day who are still recovering from Hurricane Florence. We still have neighbors who are in need of home repairs or housing, jobs, or help navigating insurance and disaster assistance processes. We're helping more than 50 families through the state and FEMA process for buyouts, elevations, and repairs. And we're working with the New Hanover da Disaster Coalition, whose volunteers, through partnerships with our faith community and nonprofits, have worked on almost 100 homes with another 85 on the wait list. Our community is still responding to needs for furniture and appliances and the stress and hardship the disaster brings. And I am grateful for our staff, our partners, and volunteers who are working to build resiliency throughout our community. We will soon begin work in creeks and streams clearing debris and sediment with more than $4 million in emergency watershed protection funds as a result of the storm. And we've submitted another 29 watershed projects to FEMA to address inland flooding that comes with heavy rainfall. We are continuing to work with community partners to repair, plan, 
and conduct community-wide exercises for an, any emergency that may come our way, like the point of dispensing exercise last October that provided 341 flu vaccines free to citizens and also allowed our public health department and other agencies to practice emergency plans. In 2020, in addition to our annual hurricane exercises, we will also join Duke Energy's Brunswick Nuclear Task Force and an array of federal, state, and local partners for an exercise that will go across 50 counties. We don't sit still. We are constantly striving to do better, understand more, and help as many people as we can. In 2019, we continued to find ways to help our community through the opioid epidemic. We furthered our opioid lawsuit against the country's largest drug manufacturers and distributors that are fueling the opioid crisis in our community. <clears throat> and we're in the process of bringing a long-awaited vision to life. A peer-led substance abuse recovery facility in New Hanover County. It It will serve both men and women and be the only one of its kind in New Hanover County and Southeastern North Carolina. This project is close to my heart. I know the critical need that this community has and I know personally the impact that a successful treatment program can have on a person and their family. So the groundbreaking of this new facility, which is expected in August, can't come soon enough. It will be life-changing for so many in our region. Construction is also underway and will be complete by next February for the county's new juvenile justice facility that is bring, being built to serve youth and our community to enhance our court services under the Raise the Age law. This project is also close to my heart because as a practicing attorney and a mom, I know the impact we can have if we're able to get to our youth early help them and offer them the resources they need to find positive paths. Under the Raise the Age law, children will now be treated as children and given the hope they deserve. I can't thank Judge Corpening enough for his vision and his passion in this effort. The county is also working on a redevelopment of our government center and the surrounding land, land excuse me, to build a, a purpose designed facility that can accommodate the needs of our citizens and our employees. Ensure we have state of the art emergency operations and 911 centers to serve our community and keep you safe. And also develop the land around us to create a true mixed use open space, bringing in tax revenue that can also serve as open community space. Our current government center is a converted shopping mall that has unused space and is inefficient, and it will need at least $20 million in repairs over the next 15 years. So this project has great potential for the county, and I look forward to the possibilities that the redevelopment will bring. But speaking of redevelopment, Project Grace is still on the table, and I hope we can decide on the fate of our downtown block this year, making sure that if we move forward, it makes financial sense, and we have the right partners at the table. We have been listening to the public, your concerns, your ideas, and we are taking our time to ensure the site is in keeping with what our community wants and needs. And one of the most widely discussed initiatives of 2019 into 20 is the in-depth process we're going through with New Hanover Regional Medical Center to evaluate and understand what possibilities exist for our local health care system. I want to thank the 21 members on the Partnership Advisory Group for their time and commitment to this important process and to everyone in the community who has been engaged along the way. We have a real possibility here to make sure we know any and all opportunities that are available to ensure that our hospital system can fulfill a strategic plan into the future. That can mean restructuring, a new partnership model, and so many options in between. This is not about a sale. It's about positioning New Hanover Regional Medical Center for the future. 
And we can't turn our backs or just decide to change because that's an easier route. We must ensure that our hospital can meet the needs of the area's rapidly growing population and adapt to changes in the healthcare industry. We need to know all the facts, understand all of the possibilities, and work to ensure our health system meets our community needs now and in the future. I look forward to the discussions and recommendations of our partnership advisory group in the months to come, and I can assure you, we will do what is right and best for our community. The year ahead of us is going to be filled with passions and possibilities. It's going to be a year of partnerships and initiatives that help everyone. No matter if you live in the city, a beach town, or the unincorporated areas of the county, we will focus on everyone, every citizen, every business, and work with all of our elected officials to be purposeful and intentional in our policies, support, and actions. We will not be bound by jurisdictional boundaries. Every person who lives here, works here, or has a business here is part of New Hanover County. That is why we announced a collaboration with the City of Wilmington to take the next year to evaluate, revamp, and transform our public transportation system to ensure it is a model that works for our citizens. We know public transportation is important, and that is why making it easier to access with less wait times and more efficient and innovative options is key. The past few weeks of additional emergency funding requests led to board government change, changes and have shown that this is even more critical than many of us knew. The county is and will continue to be committed to improve public transportation and make it sustainable and predictable to serve our community into the future. And I believe the steps we are taking today will help guarantee that. The census will also be a big part of 2020. And it is so important that everyone in our county and region is counted. An accurate, complete count is crucial to ensure we receive the federal investments we need and deserve. The census results impact our health care, economic development, infrastructure, education, and more. And we've established a campaign theme for our region, Cape Fear Counts. So I encourage all of you, when you receive your census letters in March, go in line and complete the census, and let's make sure that Cape Fear counts. 2020, 2020 will bring a renewed emphasis on advocating for our citizens in Raleigh and Washington for clean water and other environmental quality regulations, film support and expansion, keeping sand on our beaches, and so much more. And we will remain committed to economic development through partners like the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce, which aids in the growth of our economy and helps form critical partnerships that will result in the development of talent to fill jobs of today and tomorrow. Wilmington Business Development, which has brought more than 600 jobs to our region over the past two years, $60 million in new investment, and $150 million in annual economic impact. We are currently working with Wilmington Business Development on an industrial site at Blue Clay Road that will soon be market ready and bring more economic growth to our area. And Wilmington Downtown Inc., which attracted over 260.6 million in new investments last year, with 48 new businesses opening downtown and 206 new jobs for county residents. They aren't helping downtown. They are helping downtown lead the way with new investment and jobs in our community. And our ILM airport, which served more than 1 million passengers in 2019, had its second year for double digit growth and continues to move forward with their terminal expansion to accommodate continued growth, airlines, and flights. I hope everyone here will continue to fly ILM and help break new records in 2020. This is truly going to be a year of forward thinking, innovative improvements for New Hanover County. We are already beginning our budget process for the next fiscal year and our strategic plan with the priorities of intelligent growth and economic development, superior education and workforce, and superior public health and safety. We'll continue to guide our work in all that we do. We will continue funding our public schools, making extraordinary commitments to education, thinking about education policy, not just for today, but for the future, and how we can create a more cohesive, 
cradle to career system locally. We want to ensure that our students have the right tools to enhance learning opportunities in a way that makes sense in today's world so they're prepared for their next day steps in life. We will also to be actively engaged with our school, excuse me, our school system, <clears throat> offering investigative teams, mental health counselors, and support services to ensure all teachers, principals, and administrators are held accountable for their actions and to help ensure our children are protected. These are our kids, and we will do everything we can to make sure that they are safe. We also want to make an even greater impact on work, workforce housing in the coming year. In 2019, the county worked with the city to establish a joint work, workforce housing advisory committee to conduct a comprehensive analysis of workforce housing efforts and to recommend strategies to improve and increase the stock of available workforce housings in this region. This year, the committee will be leading a comprehensive housing study and public opinion survey so that we can understand even more and take actionable steps to improve workforce housing in our community. We have already conveyed three county-owned pieces of land to Cape for Habitat for Humanity for workforce housing, and this spring, I'm excited to announce that we plan to convey approximately 16 acres of county-owned property in the Riceboro area to Cape Fear Habitat to develop a workforce housing subdivision. This will be a great and much needed addition to our community. We also provided funding to numerous housing organizations that are helping our low-income neighbors who make 60% or less of the area median income. But there is still a gap for our middle-income workers who have fewer housing options available to them. So to complement the existing programs, we are going to explore a pilot program to fund rental gap assistance for moderate income workers in our area who are earning between 60 and 120% of the area median income, which is also in line with the income focus of our workhouse, workforce housing committee. Over half of the renters in New Hanover County are housing cost burden, so I hope that we can move this forward and help begin to change that. In 2020, as part of the annual budget, the county is also going to implement a social impact fund as a pilot program. It will run alongside our current non-county agency funding, but it will be based on outcomes set by the county. For the pilot, this fund will be focused on three key priorities, opioid and substance abuse, use prevention and treatment, early childhood education, and employment and workforce readiness. The county provides, plans to provide three organizations who are tackling these priorities with seed money this coming fiscal year. And based on the outcomes they meet, potentially provide additional money over the next three years. That is a new way of thinking to focus on outcomes in order to further the county's strategic plan and meet some of our community's most pressing needs. We are committed to working together with our community to make a collective impact and a lasting impact on our citizens. 2020 is a year of action, so we also plan to develop a five-year master aging plan with our Senior Resource Center that provides coordination of community services to help older adults age in place, aid in the transition from the hospital back to the home, increase paratransit services and efficiencies for older adults, enhance the county services for the aging population, and more. My initial focus for this plan is on food and nutrition and specifically reducing the number of residents on the home delivered meals wait list. Our senior resource center is doing such incredible work and this master plan will help increase their impact and focus their efforts to serve our older adults even more. If you haven't stopped by the senior resource center recently, I encourage you to go by sometime soon. They have some renovations going on now to help serve our citizens even better, but when you stop by, take a minute see the activity, meet the people. They are providing a service that no one else in our community is. They are filling a gap that is so important. New Hanover County is an amazing community and we are fortunate to call this home. And if this state of the county is any indication, 
We have a lot going on and a lot of amazing things happening. And I believe 2020 will be even more impactful, even more successful year for our county. Also welcome City Council Member Clifford Barnett Jr. Barnett Jr. Senior, excuse me. Thank you for coming. So we look forward to working with and partnering with all of you to make 2020 the best year ever. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight and good night. <laughs>